Under the ATF's new reading of the definition, firearms previously classified as large size handguns by the ATF may now require registration under the National Firearms Act as an AOW. Possession of such a firearm without registration is punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Very bad news today, the ATF is potentially going to be declaring all of your AR or AK or similar firearm pistols as AOWs, which would be an NFA registered item. Now, for those of you that have no idea what any of this is talking about, I'll get into it. I'm going to read a brief summary of it from Military Arms Channel, who actually broke this story. I'm then going to read the letter from the law firm that actually has a little bit more information after. I'm going to summarize the letter, but we're going to read the post and we'll talk about that more in depth and what this could mean. And at the end, I'm going to make sure to touch a little bit on what it could mean for the state of California, because I understand that many of you are in the state of California. Before we do that, though, I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this channel, Franklin Armory. They've been a huge supporter of me and the state of California, as well as all of the other states with their line of binary triggers with the state of California specifically, though, the CA-7, CA-11, and CA-12. Super cool that we're able to, as of right now, which if this stuff goes unfavorably for us, maybe not. Right now, we're still currently able to get AR pistols, and because of Franklin Armory, I am forever, thank forever thankful because of that. Wow, Reno, do better. So this was initially brought to my attention by Military Arms Channel, and I'm going to read this first. So let's just read it. Alert. Now, this is obviously in a position to make it very uh, catchy so people do pay attention because this is important. The BATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, is in the process of redefining AR-15 pistols, AK pistols, etc. as AOWs. This means they can charge any owner of such a firearm under the NFA with a federal crime. Get active now. More information on my Facebook page. So generally what an AOW is, there's a few types, but I'm going to leave some links down below if you want to learn exactly what an AOW typically is. Typically a firearm that is not a rifle, pistol, or a shotgun that has an overall length of less than 26 inches can be considered an AOW. So if you had an AR-15 pistol under the current situation with an overall length of under 26 inches, but it has two hand grips on it, that would generally be considered an AOW. If you have a smoothbore firearm, like the Mossberg Cruiser or the Mossberg Shockwave that has an overall length of less than 26 inches and a barrel length of less than 18 inches, that can be considered a AOW as well. So basically it's kind of this weird gray area, but there's a whole lot of other AOWs. Let's read this post that he got from the law firm. I was sent this message for sharing on social media. See the link, which we will talk about in a second. The law firm of Willie Rain is one of the largest law firms in the firearms industry and represents a number of major manufacturers in their dealings with the BATF and regulations. This is not a joke, nor is it speculation. This is a stark warning of things to come, and I hope it prompts you to take political action. The letter is, the letter is about several things, but primarily it is something that you should take very seriously because of the recent actions by the BATF that will affect any owner of AR-15 pistols, 8K pistols, HK pistols. Yes, this means your Saint AR pistol or your Draco. That's exactly what the ATF is targeting. There are several things important in this email. First, it goes against the Trump administration's executive orders mandating such regulatory practice cease. The BATF has led ha, the BATF has led the charge in thumbing their nose at the president and his DOJ under the leadership of Attorney General Barr. Second, any firearm that has a barrel length that is too long or firearm is too heavy will not be considered importable by the BATF. No more pistol versions of rifles can be importable, meaning things like your AKs that are pistols, your ARs that are pistols, your MP5 pistols, anything that's from another country cannot be imported into the state. Third, and the most important, through unwritten interpretation of regulations and through private correspondence with unspecified companies, the ATF has capriciously and arbitrarily deci decided that any AR-15 pistol, AK pistol, HK pistol, etc. is in any other weapon and thus is subject to the National Firearms Act and taxation. Any company who produces such firearms for sale in the United States and any consumer or owner of such firearms are either manufacturing or in possession of illegal AOWs. This is going to be retroactively enforced. It does not matter if you bought a previously approved firearm. The only way you can be for certain you are not in possession of an illegal NFA item is to personally submit your AR-15 pistol, AK pistol, etc. to the ATF for determination. He says, for more information, go to a link on his Facebook. I've just gone straight to that here and I have that here, which we will read it. So basically what this is talking about is that in the past, I'm going to kind of summarize this a little bit because I've read it fully. In the past, the ATF has used 
certain categories or tests to determine whether a firearm is importable because generally importation of firearms into the states is illegal unless it meets the certain uh there's a certain limitation and exception is the atf to be generally recognized as particularly suitable or readily adaptable for sporting purposes. Now, what determines sporting is a rather uh, interesting topic. Uh, there's been the only straightforward and most defined one that we really have is for handguns. It's a point system. They have to have certain characteristics. For example, that's why a Gen 3 Glock made in Austria, a Glock 19 has the serrated trigger while the Glock 17 is a smooth trigger because it needs that serrated trigger to be considered a sporting purpose and it makes it a lot harder to get smaller firearms into the states. That's also why we can't get a 380 ACP Glock other than Glock 42. There's a similar line of handguns in, in other countries that Glock makes that's chambered in 380 auto, but we can't get those in the States because it doesn't meet that sporting purpose. So the problem is when it comes to these AR or AK style firearms, there's been various uncertainty when it comes to what they consider it for importation purposes. And now this, this is where I'm gonna read this specific paragraph. This ap approach is resulting in inconsistent determinations of which the regulated community should take note. Within the past few months, at least one HK-91 pistol-style submission as light as 8 pounds with a barrel length of 8 and 3 quarter inches and an overall length of 21 and 3 quarter inches has been determined to fall outside the definition of a handgun. Now, remember when I said that under 26 inches and something that's not a rifle, pistol, or a shotgun would be considered an AOW? Well, this is where it gets interesting. So that firearm that has an eight and three quarter inch barrel, a 21 and three quarter inch overall length, and is a eight pound pistol, has been determined to fall outside the definition of a handgun. This is a change from previous determinations where firearms weighing over eight pounds with 20 inch barrels and an overall length of approximately 31 inches were held by were held to be considered handguns. Since these letters are not publicly available, it is impossible for the regulated companies, meaning the gun companies, to know the full range of the determinations, and this has serious impl implication for regulated businesses. In some of the new letters, the ATF has begun listing the following objective design features, which what does that even mean, first of all, when making its evaluation? Incorporation of rifle sights, util utilization of a rifle caliber ammunition, being either 556 or 762. That specifically is interesting because in the past the ATF has gone up in arms about the importation of 5.45, the uh, armor piercing handgun ammo, because some handguns were chambered in it. So this is kind of interesting that they're using it for both ways to both ban the 762 or ban the 545 by 39 ammo because it's armor piercing in a handgun, but then they're saying that these calibers, which are very similar, are rifle ammunition, which is interesting to me. Incorporation of a rifle length barrel, the weapon's heavy weight, ability to accept magazines that range in capacity from 20 rounds to 100 rounds, which will contribute to the overall weight of the firearm, wow. Overall length of the weapon, which creates a front heavy imbalance when held in one hand. So basically what they're going after are these, uh, big handguns as they were previously considered, like your AR pistols, your AK pistols, your Dracos, your MP5s, those sort of things. Then this paragraph here says, however, the ATF also noted in the most recent private ruling that the above design features are neither binding on future classifications, nor is any factor individually determinative, meaning that these are subject to change at any given moment because one firearm that meets these certain categories would be considered not a handgun by their determination does not mean a firearm that has the same categories met. It, it really means that they can make up their mind on any specific basis at any moment in time, and it can differ vastly from the previous determinations they've made in the past. ATF explained without elaboration that the statutory and regulatory definitions provide the appropriate standard in classifying the firearm. ATF concluded that a firearm that is too large, too heavy, or otherwise not designed to be held and fired in one hand, as demonstrated by the objective features, cannot be a handgun under the statutory definitions and cannot be subject to importation criteria governing handguns. In light of the ATF's subjective and inconsistent analysis of size and weight, it is difficult to predict how the agency will classify any given firearm under the standard. So like I said, because it doesn't matter 
if one firearm is barred from importation for certain characteristics does not mean that they have to apply that same reasoning and rule set to another similar firearm, which is really just wacky. Consideration of certain handguns and any other weapons. The new interpretation of handgun definition could have additional significant effects on manufacturers and gun owners. Under the National Firearms Act, a firearm that has an overall length of less than 26 inches and is neither a rifle, pistol, or a shotgun is classified as in any other weapon. This means that if a firearm under 26 inches in overall length is determined to not be a pistol, rifle, or shotgun, it would, it would necessarily be classified as an AOW. AOWs require the payment of a tax and registration with the federal government. Basically because in the previous section we talked about how they were considering these imported firearms to be no longer handguns, that opinion could directly apply to all of our personally owned firearms that we were able to buy and make legally in the United States. Under the ATF's new reading of the definition, firearms previously classified as large size handguns by the ATF may now require registration under the National Firearms Act as an AOW. Possession of such a firearm without registration is punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Since the ATF has not articulated a standard, it is very difficult to definitively know whether a large handgun is now an AOW because it may be deemed by the agency to be too large or too heavy to fit within the statutory definition of a handgun. The only, way to, the only definitive way to know is to submit the firearm to the ATF for evaluation, a process that can take over a year. Meaning that if I had an AK, AR or AK pistol and I was like, hey, ATF, I don't want to go to jail for 10 years, I would have to send that off to them for up to a year, at which point they have the gun, who knows how well they're taking care of it, then they could determine, yes, you can have this gun back, or no, this is an AOW, you're going to have to have this sent to an FFL and SOT, who's then going to have to form for transfer it to you by paying the $5 tax stamp. Does this mean that then you would have to, if you want to avoid all that trouble, pay the $200 to form one it? and manufacture your own NFA item, we don't really know yet. And until there's any final guidelines, we don't know. So in summary, what does this all mean? As of right now, this law firm that's very well respected and people seem to trust is saying that the ATF has changed their way of defining what makes a handgun. Does that mean that right now, if you have an AR pistol or an AK pistol that you're breaking the law? I don't know. Honestly, until we see some sort of final ruling on this, I think it's going to be very difficult, but you're going to want to stay up to date. If anything new and any big information comes out, I will obviously share that with you, but I can't always be, you know, right on it because sometimes things like, you know, having a life get in the way. So if you want to follow me on other social media sites, usually I'm quicker to share stuff on there and then I'm able to finally get time, get, you know, get off work, make a video, talk about it then. So something to know in the state of California AOW registration, so if we had to take our AR-15 pistols that we had in the state of California, if we had to register those as an AOW with the ATF, that doesn't get around the assault weapon ban. You still would have to comply with the, the California assault weapon ban, even if your firearm is a registered AOW. So your AR and AK pistols that you have that are fixed magazine, you would have to register them as an AOW if that ends up being the route that we have to go. It does not exempt you from the California assault weapon ban, and it just adds an extra level of difficulty when it comes to traveling out of state with the firearm, which I know a lot of you like to do when you shoot your firearms, uh, you know, in Nevada, Arizona, people that live close to the borders. So for Californians, this is going to be a little weird because we don't know how it's going to go. Is this going to affect our ability to get handguns in the future? Honestly, if you didn't already have one and you wanted one, I would try to get one now just in case there's some sort of weird period where you can't get them easily because um, that would really suck. I would hate to have to pay a $5 NFA tax stamp for a Form 1 and only be able to buy my CA7, CA11, or CA12 through a FFL and SOT because the only one near me is Cordelia Gun Exchange and there's not many that are willing to do the transfer because sometimes it takes up to 200 days to do an e-form for or a Form 4 uh, tax stamp application. So it kind of sucks, not something that you want to go through. If you enjoyed this video or if you found this video informative in any way, shape or form, double check for me that you are subscribed. I've had a lot of people lately like this gentleman who recently told me that he, after I mentioned it, noticed that he was unsubscribed by YouTube. I don't know what, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I know that YouTube doesn't like me on this platform. So we are working behind enemy lines in the state of California and working behind enemy lines in the, uh, sphere of YouTube. So 
If this helped you at all, let me know. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace. Oh, by the way, I want to say thank you to everyone that continually shows support on this channel. I appreciate everyone. Thank you to everyone on the subscribe star. I appreciate that. It allows me to do things that I wouldn't normally be able to do. And I just greatly appreciate it. The amount that this channel has grown over the last year is its honestly stupid. Um, I was not expecting to be where I was today. I was hoping that maybe by the end of this year I would hit 10,000 subscribers. And now we are pushing 76,000, I believe. It's uh, its wild. You're crazy. I don't know why you all continue to watch me and blabber in front of the camera. Thank you.